Well hello and welcome to my latest video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Yes, it is January the 1st, 2021. And what does that mean? It means for the first time, uh, Britain, England, United Kingdom, whatever you want to call it, well, not really United Kingdom, because we ought to really exclude Northern Ireland, but we are, yes, for the first time in 5,000 years, we are free of the European yoke. Yes, we thought the Romans, they thought they could have us, but they learned to think again. The Normans, they thought they could have us, but they learned to think again. Then the Hanoverians, they thought they could, well, actually, no, they did have us because they became kings and queens and so on and so forth. And they're still on the throne, those damn Germans. But for the first time, we are free of that European influence. We are a free country. And look out, world, because England is coming. England is coming to get you, guys. Yep, we're after your uh, natural resources. Uh, we're after your markets because we want to grow our capitalist economy on the back of the rest of the world. Yes, like we used to do in the good old days. And now, with the grand old Duke of Johnson and his faithful sidekick, the grand old Duke of Farage, only he's not a duke. Oh, 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 what a big shame, not. Leading us from the front into a bright new vaccined dawn. Yes, and there was a girl at my school whose name was Dawn Vaccine. We are coming for you, so watch out. Lock up your natural resources. Lock up your markets, lock up everything else because we want those trade deals because we've got fish, fish that needs to be sold. We have stuff that needs to be sold. We don't make it anymore, but we're going to import it and then we're going to resell it back to you at a higher price. So my first New Year's resolution is I'm going to be more positive, right? I'm going to stop talking shit about Brexit. I'm going to stop being horrible about the government, except Michael Gove. I'm going to stop making mean remarks about people. I'm going to stop taking the piss out of people who did RAF for 500. And yes, this is one of the original Rafa Wankers t-shirts. And just in case you've forgotten, there won't be a Rafa 500 next year. No, I'm sorry there won't because we're not having those kilometres in this country anymore. We're finished with your metres and your centimetres and your litres and your kilograms and all those other silly weights. We've got our own weights and measures now. We've got feet and we've got inches, we've got leagues, we've got fathoms, we've got miles. And oh, 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 it's going to be the Rafa 312.8 miles next year. And if you really feel the need to do it and put it on social media, like, of course, I have. Did I do Rafa 500? Is the Pope a Catholic? Is, is the Pope a Catholic? The, yeah, the, is the Pope a Catholic? Does a bear shit in the woods? Are the Kennedys gun shy? Yes, I did Rafa 500. And if you want to follow me on social media and on Strava, I'm there for the world to see. So um, I didn't mean to do it. I, mean, I wasn't feeling quite myself. I, was, I hadn't really done the miles this year. Bike was playing up a bit. Ought to spend some time with the kids. You know how it is. But I sneaked out on the bike when nobody was looking and I smashed out those miles. I, I didn't do it all in one go and I didn't do it for charity. Yes, I did not do Rafa 500 for charity. I did it for Julian, yes, I did it for the greater glory of my YouTube channel. So carry on watching. What are we doing today? We are going to follow up. And I know I said I wouldn't, you know, I was going to be more positive, but perhaps just for one video, I can maybe get away with it because I was thinking of some of those other uh, meaningless uh, or essentially meaningless words and phrases that cycle companies, cycle apparel companies, they're not called clothing anymore, they're called apparel, and accessories companies that they use, some of those words and phrases that they use to hide what's really going on and to make you think that some of this stuff is really worth buying. And the first one I want to talk about is contemporary. Yes, I'm buying some contemporary clothing. I'm getting some contemporary tires. I'm getting a contemporary pump. Do you know what that means? Well, I think it means sort of 
as of now. What, what, do they, what do they say? Not, not in fashion, on trend. That's it. I'm getting the on trend stuff for my 2021 bikes. And the second one, and this was actually suggested by one of my faithful viewers, I can't remember your name, but whoever you are, thanks for suggesting it. And you said smart. Why does everything these days have to be smart? Well, I don't know, because most of us cyclists are pretty dumb, and yet we're expected to understand all this smart technology. It's all got to be, it's all got to be linked to your phone. It's all got to be Bluetooth enabled. You've got to set it up with your phone. Now, I am in the lucky position. I have had two companies contact me. Now, the first one is a company that makes sealant, yes, for tubeless tyres. They obviously think that I use tubeless tyres and therefore I am a man. I am a man in need of sealant. So they sent me a bottle and it's smart sealant. Now, the way it works is right, you, uh, you scan the bottle uh, with your phone. There's a bar barcode on the bottle. Uh, so it, it links to your phone and then there's an app Okay, I, I hope you're following this. So you put the sealant into your tires and your app monitors how the sealant is performing, whether it's being depleted through use or cold weather or time or whatever it is. And when it's time to um, uh, refill your tires with new sealant, you get a, a beep and a special message on your phone and that's how you know. So it's smart sealant, not available in the shops yet, will be available in the next couple of weeks. And if you use J, uh, code uh, JH110, remember, remember that, JH110, you'll be able to get 110%, yes, 110% off the list price. So that's Smart Sealant. Now, the second company that contacted me uh, is, is one of these companies that makes organic, vaguely vegan, uh, and that's what they are actually called, vaguely vegan, uh, organic, vaguely vegan, energy bars and yes they are smart bluetooth enabled and the way it works is you you scan the the barcode on 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 the bar uh, with your phone and then you you eat the energy bar and when your body has uh consumed or subsumed or whatever the word is absorbed all of that uh, glycogen, all of that goodness that comes out of the energy bar, and therefore you're starting to feel the, the initial surges, or, or not exactly surges, but you know that kind of feeling when you're about to bonk, yes, uh, Friday night, you're about to bonk and you get that funny feeling, and then you get your smartphone beeps like that, and it tells you you've got to top up your glycogen store. So I think vaguely vegan energy bars are the way to go in the future. The only trouble is, Right. When they sent me the first uh, sort of beta batch, as, as they're called, because they're not quite finalized, the, the little chip in it that enables this sort of smart pairing to go on, I hope you're following this, I accidentally swallowed it. Didn't mean to, didn't know you weren't supposed to, but every time I go near my phone now, I start beeping and flashing. I've been able to contain the flashing, but the beeping, I'm afraid, is still a bit of a problem. So watch out for the vaguely vegan energy bars. Now, the other two words, or the next two words, are, are fairly linked. And they're linked because I don't really understand what either of them means. One of them is artisan, often used of, of bakers um, or of steel frame builders. And the other word is heritage. So if you're thinking of buying a steel bike from an artisan frame builder uh, working in a heritage environment, that probably means they're on a kind of, they're on a kind of industrial estate, um, which is a, a bit rustic. There may be uh, donkeys, uh, uh, cow shit uh, around. And they wear, uh, they wear sort of brown, sort of shit coloured aprons. And they've probably got caps, big moustaches, lots of tattoos. You know, the sort of people I mean, you may have children, maiden aunts in the, who, who look vaguely similar. And they're in a, a in kind of what a reconstituted blacksmith's forge. Uh, often some of the some of the original Roman forges, uh, which have been done up from stuff from B and Q, and now they work in there and they build these these steel frames um, because they are a heritage uh, operation. 
The next one uh, is a word that's kind of used to describe some of these new companies that have cropped up, and that's crowdfunded or a Kickstarter. And a, a crowdfunded company uh, is one that gets uh, a lot of uh, people who are, are not very bright uh, to give them money, uh, which they then spend. And the people who aren't very bright never see their money again. Uh, if they're lucky, they see a, a small uh, little product that's about one hundredth or one one percent of the value of the the donation that they made to the crowdfunded operation. And if they are exceedingly lucky, in other words, it's not going to happen. They will get really rich. Now, the reason I know so much about crowdfunded uh, operations is that I happened, yes, folks. I uh, invested or I put some money into a uh, clothing company. I won't tell you what the name is because it's a little bit unfair for various reasons. But anyway, I, I put some money into this company. I really liked their stuff. It was, it was artisan, it was heritage. Uh, some of their socks were Bluetooth enabled. Um, they, were, they, they were real game changers in, in what they were doing. That's another word. And they described all their stuff as being made of technical fabric. We, we, remember we, we had technical fabric in our last our last video and I thought well, I really like these people I like what they're doing uh, I think they're going to be successful I'll put in a bit of money because that's what they're after uh, they're going to get big uh, I'm going to get lots of clothing out of it and everything's going to be hunky-dory and I lost every fucking penny because about three weeks later they went broke and if you know anything about the cycle clothing industry you probably know the clothing company that I mean and you may well have lost money now you still say to yourself ha ah, Julian you're an idiot mate if you're dumb enough to put your hard-earned into one of these crowdfunded operations then you deserve everything you get well I got zip uh, well, I didn't even get the zip, actually, because the zip on the jacket uh, subsequently broke. But there you go. Uh, crowdfunded. It's, uh, it may work for you. Uh, it didn't work for me. Now, the next two words uh, are often put together and they're often used about fabrics like, like technical is. And this is performance and advanced. So... You buy a, a jersey or you see a jersey advertised on, on the website and it's made of advanced performance technical fabric. And you think, mm, I've got to have one of them jerseys. Yeah, I'm, uh, advanced fabric, sign me up. Performance, yes. I'm a man who performs on the bike. I'll have some of that. Technical, whew, if it's a technical fabric, preferably Italian made, because as we all know, the Italians make the best fabric, although they won't be making the best fabric anymore. No, it's English weavers. It's English wool from English sheep uh, woven. Do you, do, you wo do you wove, weave? Do you weave wool or do you knit? Knit wool. Yes, you knit wool. It's going to be English knitters yes we're going to have our own knitters we're not we're not importing knitters from Romania and Bulgaria anymore we're going to grow our own uh, knitters on the back of the the sheep uh, so the knitters will be on the sheep there'll be there'll be these great big sheep knitting farms in uh, Lincolnshire and Norfolk other places where they haven't got the industry and they right there'll be thousands of them there'll be jobs for young people 14 15 year olds who haven't been able to complete their education because of course there is no schooling anymore and they will be able to go straight in uh, to the knitting factories and they will be knitting uh, performance fabric advanced technical um, English made, right? So it won't be called Italian fabric anymore, although it'll probably be called Italian fabric, but it'll see it, in small letters it will say made in England because it, Italian fabric is a, is a brand name that anybody can use now that we are no longer part of Europe and subject to those restrictions that tell us whether we can make uh, Cornish pasties or, or Stilton cheese or uh, Melton Mowbray. Uh, pork pies. I had a Melton Mowbray pork pie and it melted before I managed to eat it. So I wasn't very happy about that. So we're going to have uh, knitting farms on the back of English sheep. 
making performance fabric jerseys for the cyclists. And in future, England is going to be a purely cycling country. Yes, one of the announcements uh, that Gavin Williamson, who's now in charge of uh, transport as well as education, uh, made just, I uh, may have missed this, just over Christmas, just a, a good day to bury, bury bad news. Uh, there are no, cars, cars are going to be banned. Um, so you're not going to be able to have uh, diesel cars from uh, uh, the 1st of April next year. They brought the date forward. Uh, you're not going to be able to have uh, petrol cars from the 1st of July um, next year. Not next year, no, this year, 2021. So uh, diesel cars banned from the 1st of April 2021. Um, petrol cars banned from the 1st of July uh, 2021. And because we're not going to share in that uh, European um, electricity driven cars, because we think that's old uh, technology, um, we're going to ban electric cars as well from the 1st of August. So if you've bought a, a, a Toyota Prius or, or a, a Jaguar Prius or a, a Morgan Prius, other Priuses are available, then I'm afraid uh, you're going to have to get rid of it because it's not going to be valid anymore. And the, the final one uh, I want to talk about, the final word I want to talk about is game changer. Yes. Now, this 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 is like for uh, a, a, an accessory or a group set or a chain set, uh, a derailleur, a brake, something like that. It's a game changer. And the reason it's a game changer is because the, the game that it's originally designed for, for example, golf, right, it changes that game uh, into another game uh, such as darts, uh, for example. Is, is darts a, a hobby or, or is it a game? Let's, let's choose uh, squash. There we are. There, there's a game. So a game changer is something that was designed originally for playing golf but is now used for playing squash. And within the cycling industry, uh, the, the best example of a game changer uh, would be a gravel bike. Okay, so uh, previously you had a bike that you rode on the road, uh, then they introduced the gravel bike, and the gravel bike was a game changer because it said now uh, this game of riding in the road trying to dodge uh, BMWs and Mercedes and Audis and other European cars, they're, they're going to be banned as well, by the way. Uh, they're banned from tomorrow. That's the 2nd of January. So if you're afraid, if you've bought one of those on a, a PCP uh, or whatever it's called, one of those higher purchase schemes, I'm afraid you're going to have to get rid of it. Because in future, uh, we're only going to be able to use uh, our cars, uh, although no, we're not going to have any cars anymore because we're not having roads. Yes, we're going back to uh, pre-Roman times. Uh, so we're getting rid of all the old Roman roads and we're going back to Saxon, Saxon gravel tracks. And the only thing you're going to be able to uh, uh, use to transport yourself around this country as we revert gradually to the Stone Age is going to be a gravel bike. So I suggest you get your orders in uh, quickly. Uh, at the moment they're all made, uh, they're, they're not made in this country, but we are going to create our own gravel bike industry. So I suggest you start saving your pennies. I wouldn't put any money into any crowdfunded operations or Kickstarter operations because you may end up like me and lose your money. So that's the first video, and I think you'll agree that today's been a pretty positive experience. We've looked forward to uh, sunny times ahead. We've looked forward to a, a glorious uh, future. It's going to be a poor future, but it's going to be it's going to be an independent future. It's going to be a sovereign future. Uh, we're going to have our own queen. We're not going to have to share our queen with, with other countries in, in Europe or um, Australia or the Caribbean or anywhere like that because we decided now, uh, and I'm afraid if you're, if you're one of the Commonwealth countries and you thought you'd be able to have a little bit of our queen, I'm afraid uh, no, you're not, you're not going to be able to have that because the Queen now is just going to be uh, for, for Great Britain. She's just going to be the Great Britain Queen. Uh, uh, Prince Andrew, he may be available. Prince Edward, if anybody knows who he is, he may be available also uh, to undertake certain duties in other countries. But our Queen, I'm afraid because we're now a sovereign, independent 
nation. Uh, our queen is for uh, uh, us and, and us alone. So hope you've learned something from uh, today's video. Uh, if you have and you want to leave a comment down below, uh, if you haven't and you want to leave a comment down below, you may. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, you can subscribe. If you don't enjoy my videos, it's even better to subscribe because then you can get annoyed more often. And don't forget, all of my videos raise money for the Vine Food Bank, which is in Croydon, which is in the United Kingdom. So, hope you enjoy the rest of 2021. Good luck to you all, and see you next time.